This next guy uh, was at the show in Petersburg. Wabi Sabi did a fantastic job dealing with the bachelorette party, which is always fucking horrifying. Uh, did a great job, very funny man. Everybody give it up for Mr. Kenny Wiggle. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Pitch me and tape. Silver. Again. What's up? I'm gonna do this shit in 3D now. It's every movie now is good in 3D. What's up, people? How y'all feeling? One year anniversary? Cafe D, another round of applause for Joe Hackey. Putting it on. An awesome crowd. How many people is the first time you've been to uh, Cafe Diem? Round of applause. Cool, cool, Adam. You guys been here before? Have you had a seat before, dude? You just chilling on the floor? What are you doing with your phone, man? What are you doing on your phone? Texting your girlfriend? What's your last text say? Miss you. Everybody, oh. oh. Did she re reply yet? That's what she said. All right. Huh? That's what she said. What was your last text? Oh, my last text was me. Oh. oh. <laughs> they each deserve it, I guess. You drinking? No? That table's drinking. Drink up, y'all. Don't drink too much, though. Start saying stupid shit like I did the other day. I got tore up. I was in this club, and I was with my buddies. I'm hanging out at the bar, and this girl walks up to me. She's like, hey, Kenny, how you doing? It's like, hey, how are you? Apparently, you know, she recognized that I didn't, I didn't remember who she was, so she wanted to test me and shit. She was like, oh, you don't even remember me. What's my name? I was like, girl. You know your name. <laughs> Who's smoking? I heard a lot of people clapping for the weed shit. Y'all are terrible. You know that's a gateway drug. You guys act like I you just found that out for the first damn time and shit. Really? What's it gonna lead to? VCU students. 25-year-old perennial undergrads. <laughs> I don't know. I, I had to stop smoking weed, especially when I moved down south, man. I, I got pulled over one time, and I was tore up. I was high as shit. And this cop pulled me over. He's like, license and registration, please? I was like, huh? He knew I was high. This country ass accent. Oh boy, you off your roof, ain't you? I said, what? I was on a roof. How long you been following me? What the hell? A lot has happened in a year, huh, Joe? Yeah. We used to have. Apparently, this is the best corner to sell art. We Y'all were here before, we used to have some different pictures. That shit on that wall just doesn't sell. It's going on this 40th year anniversary. This shit is high dollar. I got pissed off the other day, and I'll tell you why. All right? I had a cough drop in my mouth for like three minutes. And the next thing I know, I went, <coughs> and I spit the shit out. <laughs> I should have told that joke in 3D. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> One year, been doing stuff here, man. One year. It's awesome. The other day I was walking in the store and uh, this girl checking me out, she had this little baby bump. 
throats. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do you know Blake? <laughs> <laughs> Have we met before? <laughs> no, she had this little baby bump, or, or what I thought was a baby bump. So I asked her, I said, uh, so, oh, oh, that's cute. It's like, when are you due? She's like, I'm not pregnant. It's like, oh, <laughs> uh, no. That's some shit that you don't do, is ask somebody, when they're due, and they're not even pregnant. And the shit didn't end there, because I felt bad. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I feel like such an asshole. Did you have a boy or a girl? I do that shit either. She's like, I'm not pregnant, asshole. It's like, whoa, whoa, I'm sorry, I feel bad. All I was trying to say is that, well, if you were pregnant, you look great. <laughs> she texts you back yet, dude? Now he's texting your girlfriend? What the hell's going on? <laughs> Tell, what's your last text say, dude? Uh oh. Oh, it's got to down. Huh? Yeah, have you fun feeling awkward yet? <laughs> Happy, fun, feeling... Happy, fun, feeling awkward. Happy, fun. You feel awkward now? I mean, not really. No? Is she using T9 text messages or some shit? Why does that not make sense? You guys see this, like, T9 text message? And I hate this shit. All right, you just, T9 is like this predictive text where you, like, type in the first letter and then it finishes the rest of the word for you. It doesn't make any sense. Like, a buddy of mine, I texted him the other day and all I texted him was, what's up? And his reply was, just sitting on the stove waiting for the doodles to dry. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> did you reply to that shit? Yeah. What did you say? Not yet. <laughs> so you acknowledged that you understood her bullshit. Yeah. You didn't even call her out on it or anything? <laughs> that was retarded. You are retarded. R-A-H, tard. <laughs> Have I got no light yet? Uh, yes. <laughs> Who said yes? Happy Joe. Who said yes? Happy. Joe? <laughs> Fuck you, Joe. I told Joe to say something earlier, and he didn't say it, so I'm going to say it. It won't work for you. <laughs> All right, let me see. Let me see how I can get in this. I'm, I'm going to do my... Uh, like tribute to Joe Hafke, tribute to Corey Marshall, <laughs> tribute to Cafe Diem. Since everybody knows, or you guys, I'm gonna fill you guys in. I'm Indian. Nobody knew, and not the like Capital One call center Indian, the Native American Indian, you know. So I'm gonna do my uh, <laughs> my Joe Hafke, Corey Marshall tribute to Cafe Diem. I was with my wife the other day. <laughs> and they hadn't invented the washboard. The washboard. <laughs> That's a lot funnier when Joe's slave tells it. That shit rock. Did you get that silver? Yeah. Killer. Can you edit in laughter? Can you edit that out, what I just said? And that part? All right. Go. Uh... Good stuff. Uh, this uh, this next guy is the uh, the king of uh, comedy in Charlottesville. He runs the Bell Rio Showcase. He runs uh, what is it? Rupa? 
Is that it? Wuprov Improv Group? Very funny man. Everyone, please give it up for the Southern Heritage Foundation presents Jim Sarver. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. As the man said, I am brought to you tonight by the uh, Southern Heritage Foundation. I'm the first Charlottesville comic to officially sell out. Uh, so in, uh, in order to get paid from the foundation, I have to give certain announcements that they like during my set. Uh, the first one is the Southern Heritage Foundation would like you to know that there were no slaves in the Confederacy, merely a glitch in the payroll computer. <laughs> Let's give it up for Joe one last time. Let's give it up for Joe. I just like being on stage while people are clapping. Thank you for making that come true. Uh, someone mentioned that new uh, KFC sandwich earlier, and I've kind of invented one myself. Uh, you take a kielbasa and cheese and bacon, and you put it between two chicken breasts. I call it the titty fuck. <laughs> In Virginia, if you are bitten by a dog and you have to go to the emergency room, the doctors are required by law by law to alert the authorities so the authorities can go out and see if the dog is dangerous. In Virginia, if you are raped and you go to the emergency room, the doctors are not required by law to alert the authorities. <laughs> Apparently we don't have to go out and see if the rapist is dangerous. And most of our best cops are out rounding up dogs anyway. The problem for me now is if my dog bites someone, before I take him to the emergency room, we have to get our rape story straight. You know? Like, look, just tell him that after the party, Buster overpowered you and raped you. Your dog is a Jack Russell Terrier. Just shut up! He caught you off guard. Uh, it's a female. Look, you want that bite looked at or not? Just stick to the story. Is that what you were wearing? Walking shoes? You're practically begging for it. That's all right. The Southern Heritage Foundation would like you to know that you say we own slaves. We say we mastered effective motivational techniques. Wow. 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 Did you just say that, dog? Uh, I'm sorry. I noticed like, everyone comes up with like little notes, and I probably could just print these on little notes so it looked like I knew what I was doing. But I just like, fuck it. I'll just print it on 8 and a half by 11 sheets of paper, and I'll just read it. It's all new shit, and I'm a fucking moron. And then this is funny because it's about my family, like I didn't know this. I grew up in kind of a large family. Uh, and it's like four kids, which isn't really that large until you realize that we, all four of us were in one bedroom, we had two bunk beds. And like the older kids were on top and the younger kids were on the bottom. And you know what's really weird, sir, is discovering what you can do with your dick while your little sister's sleeping in the bunk underneath you. <laughs> no, I mean, it's nature, dude. Who just, oh, uh, what, you never touch yourself? <laughs> So I'd lie in that top bunk and I'd make sure that everyone else in the room was asleep, right? I'm going through my mental catalog of boner-producing females, like, boom, Punky Brewster, it's on. I know, woo! So once I'm sure everyone's asleep, you start getting into it, it's like really slow at first, because Punky Brewster and she's classy, you just don't go pounding on Punky Brewster. And the scene is like really, it's perfect, you know, Henry's working late, Brandon is sleeping on the floor, and Punky whispers, oh champ. Or punky. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden there's this rustling in the lower bunk and that wine that little kids make, you know, she's like, oh, it's my sister. She's like, Jim. And you're like, what? Why is the bed shaking? Fuck. Uh, the bed isn't shaking. Just go back to sleep. Yes, it's rocking. Like someone was dancing. <laughs> Fuck, I didn't realize I wasn't that into it, you know? Uh, go to sleep. I'm telling mom. Fine, sorry, I have a bad itch. I was just scratching it. Now go to sleep. And I wait for everyone to calm down and get back to sleep. I get back to my fantasy, except now Henry's home from work and Brandon's on the bed and Punky's got a bowl of ice cream and she's not really interested anymore. And now it's turned into this whole meta thing where I'm jerking off to a fantasy of me jerking off while sitting in a room with Punky Brewster while she's eating ice cream. <laughs> but that's still pretty hot, I gotta admit, that's still pretty hot. And then the next day I get home from school and my mom wants to take me to the doctor because my little sister says I've got this rash that I'm scratching every night. And then it gets even worse because my sister has no idea what's going on until we put this on the internet later on. Uh, before I forget. Oh, I lost my cards. I'm not going to get paid. Thank you. 
the Southern Heritage Foundation would like you to know the Civil War was about economics. Mainly the shitload of money we made without labor costs. <laughs> uh, this is my last bit here. Uh, I, was, I was talking to my brother, and uh, he said he worked with this guy who was a bit of a white supremacist. And I was like, how can you be a bit of a white supremacist? That's like an all-in ideology. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm supreme, right? And I'm thinking maybe he had like a tiered system for his hate. He's like, white people are superior to all black people that I have met and beaten at categories. <laughs> also the New York Knicks. All white people are superior to those blacks, except the white guys in the Knicks. Black people not in the Knicks are superior to those whites. And Joe Biden. All whites, except the whites on the Knicks and Joe Biden are superior to blacks. Except Michael Jordan. He's awesome. Michael Jordan is superior to all whites, except those in my immediate family. At least those family members who came to my last family reunion except Steve, he's a little slow in the head. Michael Jordan is superior to him, but inferior to the rest of my family. So in conclusion, all white people, except those that play for the Knicks, and my cousin Steve, are superior to all blacks that I've beaten in categories, and blacks that play for the Knicks. Michael Jordan is an exception, who is superior to most whites. Ah, oh, I forgot about Carl Weathers. Shit. Let me get back to you with a list. Our last, last note before I get off stage from the Southern Heritage Foundation. They say they want you to know that owning slaves may be wrong, but it is still baller as fuck. My name is Jim Zarling. Thank you very much. Yay! Jim Zarling, everyone. Jim Zarling. What is this? What is that? Yeah, what is that? Condoms? It's a rapper. Oh. Memory card. All right. It's not conscious. Anyways, how's everybody doing? Wasted. Wasted. Yes. Like drinking, guys. Like drinking. I love drinking, guys. I love drinking. The problem is when I'm drunk, I make horrible decisions, like 2 a.m. Taco Bell runs or majoring in journalism. But uh, it's fucking awful. Uh, this next guy will be hosting the open mic tomorrow night at Fallout. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr. Joshua Saucier. Yay! Fucking hell. Right, you guys may have noticed that uh, most of the comics wind up waiting over here by the bathroom on deck before they come on stage. I, this isn't a joke I wrote. I literally just saw a guy walk in there with half a glass of PBR and then walk out with a full glass of PBR. His kidneys are at capacity. So this, this room has been here for a year. I don't know if I've been coming here for a year, but I hope so. And I hope I'll still be here next year. I love this place. I love you guys. I look around. A lot of my friends are here. A lot of comics. A lot of people I know from outside of comedy. So I'm going to use this platform to, to tell you guys something. A lot of you have been coming up to me, and you've noticed that, well, Superman and I are never in the same room at the same time. And I'm going to use this platform to tell all of you right now that there's a reason for that. It's because that guy is fucking afraid of me. <laughs> That's right, that's the part where I take my glasses off, then look at my notes. Good planning saucier. Uh, by the way, Punky Brewster, for everyone who thinks it's sick that he was jerking off to a little girl, Google Soleil Moon Fry nude. It's out there, and you can jerk off to it now. I'll spell Soleil for you after the show if you need me to. Or just pull her up on my phone. Uh, so, I, uh... I know you guys don't really believe for, for a second that Superman is afraid of me or that I am Superman. I, uh, what? Uh, actually, the first time Kenny ever saw me on stage, he walked up and said, oh, hey, what do you do? <laughs> um, but I, uh, I feel all right about myself. I've actually, I, I've focused my entire life on, uh, on being more like G.I. Joe. Like this has been the defining factor of my existence. When I was a kid, I got up every morning I felt exactly like a G.I. Joe. I was gonna go out, I was gonna take the day by storm, I was gonna kick the fucking door down and kick Cobra's ass, except they didn't say fucking or ass because I was six. Today, as an adult, exactly the same philosophy. I get up every single morning, I feel exactly like a G.I. Joe. 
my hands cramp like this, and I don't bend at the waist anymore. I'm serious. I'm wearing these because I have to take a breath between putting on socks. Shit's hard. So, uh, so that I love GI Joe. Uh, I don't like TV these days anymore. I don't. I watch all the TV shows, and they fucking suck. Uh, and the only reason I still watch TV is the commercials, which are awesome. Especially uh, the late night, like 3 a.m. drug commercials. Uh, I saw one for Cialis, this pill that helps old men pee better. They list exactly two side effects for Cialis. I'm sorry. Flomax is the pill that helps old men pee better, not Cialis. Cialis helps old men do something else better. That's a different joke entirely. Flomax helps old men pee better. They list exactly two side effects. Runny nose and a low semen count. And I think they're related. <laughs> so now the Cialis joke. You guys are waiting for it. Come on, come on, let's go. Uh, Cialis, the, the new Viagra, the new little blue pill. It's, uh, they again, at the end of this commercial, they list some warnings. Warning, notify your doctor before taking Cialis. If you have a heart condition, or if you're HIV positive. If you are HIV positive and you cannot get it up, you should stop trying. You clearly abuse the privilege. Uh, actually, the thing I like about the fact that all our recreational drugs have been replaced by this shit from Canada is uh, it's worked its way into slang. I'm hanging out with a friend of mine, and this girl walks in, and he says, Oh, check that her Check her out. That chick is Matrix hot. She looks like Trinity? No, dude. Why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? Yeah. I'm sorry, that was another hard dick joke. Uh, so, I know looking at me, you all think I'm really cool. It's a lie. Um, I've actually, I've had a hard time uh, meeting women in the real world. So I started, I checked out online dating. Uh, and I'm kind of picky, so I didn't want to just use like the regular site. Uh, I wanted to meet Jewish singles. I went on J-Date. I thought, all right, this will be cool. You know, we can mix it up a little. Uh, and it was dead, like MySpace. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out, because I, I still want to meet Jewish singles, and I'm trying to figure out where they all went. And then I found them. And now I have a profile on uh, FreeCreditReport.com. <laughs> Ladies, I'm a 720. I like Spielberg films and short walks on the Sabbath. Uh, and I, I think that's cool. I think that's a great niche. I think the Jewish-themed social networking is awesome. But it's really only J-Date. I tried to figure out why other sites don't, don't work that way. Like, why isn't there Jewish Facebook? And then I realized it's because Facebook is already Jewish Facebook. I think you, you sign in, the first thing you see up in that corner is you should write on your cousin's wall. You haven't talked to him in a while. Hey, six of your friends are fans of being a lawyer. Maybe you should be too. I got tagged in a note the other day from my mom that just said, eat, eat, you're so skinny. Um, but I, uh, I was filling out, uh, filling out my profile and uh, I wasn't sure what to put about myself. Should I mix it up? Should I lie? I figured I'd go with lying. Because um, I, I know I've said I look cool, and I'm not. Uh, I actually, I played Magic the Gathering for 11 and a half years. Yeah! Yeah, that's not on my Facebook profile. I try to keep that on the DL. Uh, but I ran into a guy I played cards with, who was not Blake, uh, at a bar recently. And uh, he comes up to me and says, Hey, I remember you, you played Magic! Yes. Yeah, you you were awesome, dude. You love black decks. Okay. No, it, it, you played black decks all the time. We called you the king of black decks. Then a girl walked over. Did that guy just say you love black dick? I told her yes, because it was far less embarrassing than what we were fucking talking about. I'm glad I, uh... I tell that joke, and sometimes people have no idea what I'm talking about, and uh, I can't figure out the mic stand. God damn it. Uh, 
And uh, one thing I like about telling that joke in this town is you can't throw a rock without hitting a nerd. But that's not a fair statistic. I've never thrown a rock in this town without also aiming for a nerd, so. Uh, the only thing that I decided I should put on my Facebook profile that I, I also want to share with you guys is uh, I have really terrible ADD. Uh, and some of you don't know. Uh, right, Josh will be hosting the open uh, night tomorrow at uh, Fallout. Fallout, right? That's a sex club, right? Yes. Sex club. Be a hell of a show. Somebody fuck somebody or something. Um, I don't really know what's going on with this next act. There's uh, two names down here. Um, Everyone give it up for Emily and David. Hello. I'm Emily. Hi. And I'm David. Hey. This is a little bit of uh, nostalgia because I met Emily. Uh, Emily and I, we, we've known each other for a long time. And when, when we were young kids, we were we went to the the we went to the fairs because we did this just say no to drugs things you know the, that kind of thing we did have this performance that we had worked out and so last week I met her I saw her again at the bar and I was like don't I know you and she's like I don't know because I have changed a lot and then after a while I told her I was like oh hey remember we, when we were young kids. And we'd go on tour to the various fairs, and we would do those just thing, no to drugs things. We had that act. And I was like, okay. She, um, she was like, okay. I remember that. And I was like, oh, well, we should do that again. And she was like, I don't really know. So I, remember, I reminded her of what the act consisted of. And so she was like, all right. And so I talked her into doing it. And then I was like, okay. <laughs> and this is this is what it was. But let's first first this is how it goes. There's um fluorescent lights that have the name Emily, Ampersand, and Dave. And around it there are light bulbs. <laughs> And then you have to flip the light switch on. So here it goes. You ready? Comedy! was that David, but now I have David Marie Garland, who just was on stage. I wanted to do stand-up, but is he not going to do a set? Yes, he is. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> He's not telling you a set. He's one of the funniest guys in this movie. He's one of the funniest people I've ever fucking met in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, the comedy style is Mr. David Marie Garland. Thank you, you fuckers. What's up, bitches? My name is David Marie Garland. I'm gonna fuck your asses up with my comedy. All right, what's up, the cafe DM? Y'all ready for my shit? All right. So yesterday was Mother's Day. Am I right? I went to my mom's house and I was like, and she was like, hey, you want some fried chicken? And I was like, Mom, I'm a vegetarian. And she was like, and I was like, Mom! All right, all right. Have you ever been to a restaurant before with your mom? And she has ordered the exact same thing that you're about to order. So you have to quickly reread through the menu because, you know, you don't want to order the exact same thing that your mom just ordered. Because how embarrassing is that? 
It's like having to wear braces. Here's my impersonation of me grabbing a girl's pair of tits. Here's my impersonation of me when I hear that girl is pregnant. Here's my impersonation of me. There are two things I won't do. Ride a bike and eat sriracha. <laughs> they say things and some of those things are true. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thanks, fucking hysterical. Holy shit! Broken. Alright, All right, guys, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we already did the uh, clap, the wave clap from this side. We're gonna start it from this side, we're gonna bring it across here. You guys ready? Start the clap. All the way across. Keep going. All the way, all the way, all the way to the back corner. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr. Jack Drake. Um, hi, how's it going? Uh, so I don't have any notes, uh, but I did draw a picture while I was waiting to come up. Uh, it's a picture of Kermit the Frog on a, a mountain full of dead Muppets uh, with Miss Piggy and what looks like a Madonna bra. So anyway, um, so I was from Charlottesville, and I noticed you guys have like a Monument Avenue, and we have like a couple statues in Charlottesville, and the statue I really love is the statue of Lewis and Clark, which is in the middle of town. And this is the statue. This is Lewis. This is Clark. And this is Sacagawea. <laughs> like she's fucking worm tongue from Lord of the Rings. I want to see a new statue. I want to see a statue of what was actually happening. I want to see a statue of Sacagawea in the front seat of a minivan driving Lewis and Clark to Disney World. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? How about now? Clark's on my side. Lewis is touching me. I need to pee. Guys, I will turn this expedition around. Because the thing about, I'm sorry, the thing about love about Lewis and Clark is that what kind of qualifications do you need to go on a mission whose entire purpose is to make sure the Louisiana Purchase is actually there? Like, it really isn't that sort of thing you should check before you spend three times your nation's worth. Like, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to spend that much money and find out the French pull it fast one. It's like, no, no, it is that, we promise. No, no, it goes all the way to China. You just get that and you just keep going. I mean, I'm starting to think that maybe just Lewis and Clark were the two guys at the office nobody liked. So they like transfer them to a different branch. Like Thomas Jefferson's at a cabinet meeting going, uh, Samuel, you'll create a university for us. Uh, Thomason, I want you to create uh, a portrait of me for the $2 bill. Uh, Lewis and Clark. You guys just go that way. Just keep going until you hit an ocean and then come back. Go to an ocean and come It's a good thing that the Louisiana Purchase was actually there. Because it would have sucked like two weeks after Jefferson sent him out, they come back, it's like, Lewis, you're back already? <laughs> Lewis and Clark, you're back already. It's only been a week. What happened? Well, we got to St. Louis and there's just nothing there. There's just a big sign. It's like, I can't believe you fucking bought this! Check your facts. Snopes.com. When it's invented in 400. It's a big sign. Um... <laughs> So elections, uh, midterm elections are coming up. Uh, I noticed that driving down here. Uh, there's all these little tiny signs everywhere, like who you should vote for and whatnot. Um, I saw a sign that was great the other week. I uh, driving by a church and it said, uh, vote Jesus for Savior. <laughs> that would be the shittiest person to run against ever. The absolute, what can you, what can you say bad about Jesus? Like they're not gonna like put out an ad and be like, Jesus Christ has made a lot of promises. <laughs> Free fish every Sunday. The meek inheriting the earth. And eternal glory for his followers. But what has he really delivered? And they would do like a montage of Jesus. Anyway. 
<laughs> this fall, don't vote for a man who hasn't shown his face in over 2,000 years, but for a man you can find in the phone book. This message paid for by Dick Cheney for Savior. He totally would do it. The thing is, like, I, I'm thinking about that, and if Jesus, act, you know, if someone made a, an ad like that, Jesus would have to come back. Like, he'd come down from heaven, like, you know, have his own ad. You know, like, a white background with a couch and a puppy on it. He just comes in. Hi, I'm Jesus Christ. You know, my opponent has made a lot of claims. This fall, I just want you to remember one thing. Vote Jesus Christ, or my dad will send you to hell. And a landslide victory! Jesus Christ is still your savior. The inauguration will be on a hill with three crosses. In attendance will be Mary Magdalene, uh, two thieves, and a Roman with a spear. Apparently Jesus jokes don't do too well on the original. Uh, one last thing before I get off stage. One last, one last thing before I get off stage. Uh, I want to talk about the first time I ever did acid. I was in college, and I went to a party, and the guy who gave me acid looked like he only had a rough idea on how clothing worked, and that should have been my first clue. But me, being the smart 18-year-old with that boy that I was, I took the acid, he gave me three tabs, and I took all three tabs at once. Uh, yeah, oops. <laughs> I was fine for about 15 minutes. Uh, this is what I remember clearly. I remember walking down a corridor in the house and suddenly the walls started to melt and uh, the world turned into a negative of itself and 24 hours later I was still tripping in my dorm room crying because the leprechauns would not stop dancing. And my roommate came up, came up to me and was like, dude, are you right? I was like, I thought it was Jabba the Hutt and I was trying to speak Cutties. So that's why I don't do drugs anymore. Um, I'm Jack. Jack Briggs, everyone. All right, guys, we're down to our final three comics. Who's excited? Yeah? All right. Who's ready for your. Uh... Wait, I already said that. I'm just kidding. <laughs>